Hello and welcome to Maulana Azad National Urdu University's Global Classroom. Today, we shall take up the use of capital letters in punctuation. While this lesson is specifically meant for the undergraduate students, that is, the students of BA, BSc, BCom first year, I invite every student of Urdu University to spend the next 30 minutes with me. You might be enrolled in one of the certificate courses, a diploma course, any one of our UG programs or a program of PG study. I still feel that you are going to benefit from the session that is to follow. Punctuation, as you all know, refers to the use of full stop, comma, inverted commas, colon, hyphen, semicolon, apostrophe, exclamation mark, question mark, and of course, capital letters. Some of you might want to know, what are capital letters? Well, the letters of the English alphabet written thus in the upper case are the capital letters. I would like you to look at this very carefully and try to remember the letters. Now, some of you might have another doubt. Are there capital letters in Punjabi, in Telugu, in Hindi, in Gujarati or in Urdu? Are there capital letters in the Indian languages? Well, the answer is no. Then it becomes all the more important that the students who study English in India, that is the Indian students of English should be well versed in the use of capital letters. Why should capital letters be used? Does the use of capital letters affect speech? Does one's pronunciation, stress or intonation vary with the use of capital letters? Does the use or even misuse of capital letters affect speech? Well, no, while the use of capital letters does not affect speech at all, it is still important that we learn the use of capital letters because capital letters are an essential part of written communication. Written communication, as you know, is an everyday activity. Take your own example. As students, you will have to pass a written examination to qualify for your degree. Even on the job front, the use of written English is an essential everyday activity. Therefore, learning to use capital letters is very important. Now, you might want to know where capital letters should be used. But before I answer this question, I would like you to read this passage. He is Ahmad. He lives in Mumbai. He was born on Monday, the 23rd of January, 1970. His father is a doctor. He is called Dr. Zahir by his patients. Ahmad and I grew up together. If you have followed the sentence very carefully, you might have noticed that capital letters were used in some places. Were they used indiscriminately? No. Every time a capital letter was used, it was used to answer a specific rule. As students, I am sure you have already noticed that we have used capital letters to begin every sentence. Yes. One of the most basic uses of a capital letter, as you all know, is to begin a sentence. I would like you to read these examples. He is Ahmad. He lives in Mumbai. She is a beautiful woman. They have lost the match. How are you? Oh dear! In each of these examples that we have looked at, you have seen how the word which begins the sentence is written with the initial letter capitalized, irrespective of whether the sentence is a statement, a question or an exclamation. You just have to start the sentence with a capital letter. This rule is very basic, very simple and very easy to remember. Before you put down your pen on paper, remember to put the first letter in the capital case. And every time you put a full stop, begin your next sentence using a capital letter. Very simple, very easy, very basic rule. 
we now move on to the next use of the capital letter. This is also a rule that most of the students are familiar with. The names of all persons are capitalized. Look at these examples. He is Ahmad. He is called Dr. Zahir. Professor Patan is the Vice Chancellor of Urdu University. Badarunisa is having her dinner. In each of the examples that we have studied, the names of persons have been capitalized. You may have noticed we have capitalized Ahmad, Zahir, Patan, and Badarunisa. Ahmad is the name of a person. Even though it occurs in the middle of the sentence, the letter A is capitalized. Similarly, Patan is the name of a person and the letter P is capitalized. Zahir and Badarunisa are also names of persons and therefore are capitalized. So, we use a capital letter to begin a sentence and to indicate names of persons. Now, let us move on to another use of the capital letter. Capital letters are used to indicate names of places. Look at these examples. He lives in Mumbai. Hyderabad is in Andhra Pradesh. We live in India. Muslims go to Mecca to perform Hajj. In each of these examples, the names of places have been capitalized. Whether it is a street, a village, a town, a city, the name of a state or the name of a nation, you have to capitalize the name of a place every time and wherever it occurs in a sentence. Each of the places that we have looked at now, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Andhra Pradesh, India and Mecca are names of places and are therefore capitalized. As students, you might have already realized that while you do remember to use the capital letter to begin a sentence and to write names of persons, you generally do not remember to capitalize the names of per places. But now that you know it, I'm sure you're going to follow this rule. One other use of the capital letter is to indicate the days of the week and the months of the year. Look at these examples. He was born on Monday, the 23rd of January. We went on a picnic in March. I work Tuesday through Saturday. It is cold in November and December. In each of these examples, the days of the week such as Monday, Tuesday and Saturday have been capitalized. Similarly, the months of the year such as January, November, March and December have also been capitalized. It is not very difficult to remember this rule. There are only 7 days in a week and how many months are there in a year? Well, only 12. So, you will capitalize all the days of the week. Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday and all the months of the year from January to December will be capitalized. It is not very difficult but a very very easy and simple rule to remember. Now let us proceed further and see how capital letters are used to indicate titles and designations. Study these examples. He is called Dr. Zahir by his patients. Professor A.M. Patan is the Vice Chancellor of Urdu University. The President of India will visit China next month. The Chief Justice addressed the gathering. In each of these examples, you would have noticed that the letter D of Doctor, P of Professor, V and C of Vice Chancellor, P of President, and C and J of Chief Justice have been capitalized. And have you noticed that they've been capitalized because these are either titles or designations? Yes, I can look at the doubt that is troubling you. You are going back to the passage that you have read a little while ago and your concentration is on a sentence which read, his father is a doctor. We use the word doctor there without capitalizing the letter D. Whereas, in the sentence, he is called Dr. Zahir by his patients, we have used a capital letter for D. 
Have we made a mistake? Is there a dichotomy? Well, no. In the first sentence, when we said his father is a doctor, the word doctor is used to indicate a profession and hence is not capitalized. Well, you can say she is a teacher, I am a student without capitalizing either the S of student or the T of teacher because teacher here refers to a profession whereas Dr. Zahir does not refer to the profession. It is a title given to a person and therefore Dr. Zahir will have to be capitalized. Similarly, professor is a title. P of professor is capitalized, P of president is capitalized while designations like vice chancellor and chief justice are capitalized. Have you noticed another thing in these examples? Both the letters V and C of vice chancellor and C and J of chief justice have been capitalized. Why have we done this? Wherever there are compound words, you will have to remember to use a capital letter for both the letters. Let us now move on to the use of capital letter in the case of the pronoun I. The pronoun I, irrespective of the place that it occurs in a sentence, will need to be capitalized. You will never use the pronoun I in the small case. I want you to read these sentences with me. Ahmed and I grew up together. My sister and I went to Agra last year. He asked me if I could meet him that day. My friends and I had dinner at Hyderabad house. Every time the letter I has been used in these sentences, it has occurred in the middle. However, the pronoun I has always been capitalized. So, remember, I is egoistic. Do not use the small case. Always put it in the upper case. Let it stand out in the sentence. It is all by itself a single lonely letter seeking for attention and give it the attention that it deserves by capitalizing the letter I. Before we proceed any further with the uses of capital letters, let us go back and try to recollect what we have learned. We have seen how capital letters are used to indicate names of places, persons, days of the week, months of the year, titles and designations, and of course, using it to begin a sentence and to indicate the pronoun I. Now, let us see how capital letters are used to indicate names of monuments. The Taj Mahal is in Agra. I visited the Qutb Minar in May. The Char Minar is in Hyderabad. Taj Mahal, Qutb Minar, Char Minar are all names of monuments. They are all historical monuments. And therefore, when you have to refer to any of these monuments, you could be referring to the Red Fort, you could be referring to any other monument. Just remember to use capital letters. The C of Charminar is capitalized, T and M of Taj Mahal are capitalized, Qutb Minar is written with a capital Q and a capital M. So, you use a capital letter to indicate names of monuments. Apart from this, Capital letters are also used to indicate names of places of worship. My friend went to the Konak temple last year. The golden temple is in Amritsar. Muslims visit the Kaaba during Hajj. In these examples, the names of places of worship, whether it is the Konak temple, the golden temple or the Kaaba have all been capitalized. So. Apart from names of monuments, you will also capitalize names of holy places. Now, let us see how capital letters are used to indicate names of rivers. The Taj Mahal is built on the banks of the river Yamuna. Three students were drowned in the Godavari. Yamuna, Godavari are names of rivers and need to be capitalized. So, you could be talking about the Brahmaputra, the Narmada, the Tapti, the Ganges or any other river. Every time you use the name of a river, remember to begin it with a capital letter. 
Let us now move on to another use of the capital letter. Capital letters are used to indicate names of mountains. The Himalayas are in the northern part of India. Tirupati is famous for the Tirumala Hills. Himalayas, as you know, are the names is the name of a mountain. Tirumala is the name of a hill, and therefore H and T are capitalized. Similarly, you could say Bachendri Pal was the first woman to climb Mount Everest, and you would be capitalizing the M of Mount and the E of Everest. So, whether it is a hill, a peak, a mountain range, or whatever, remember to use a capital letter. Shall we now look at how capital letters are used to indicate names of oceans? Suppose you were to put this question, have you ever flown over the Pacific Ocean? You would capitalize P and O. Or perhaps you want to say, the Indian Ocean lies to the south of India. In both the cases, you will be using capital letters to indicate the names of oceans. Do you think you are confused? Do you think it is difficult to remember the names of oceans? Or you may never know whether it is an ocean or not? Well, no, there is no need to get confused. How many oceans are there? Only four. So, Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, Arctic Ocean and Antarctic Ocean will need to be capitalized. Apart from this, a capital letter is also used to indicate names of buildings. If I were to say, my friend is waiting for me at Aikar Bhavan, I would capitalize A and B. Or you could say, the President of India lives in the Rashtrapati Bhavan. In these two examples, Aikar Bhavan and Rashtrapati Bhavan are names of places and therefore they need to be capitalized. It could be any other building. You could be, for example, uh, talking about Gagan Vihar. Yesterday I was at Gagan Vihar, capitalized G of Gagan and V of Vihar. Or perhaps you want to, or perhaps you want to say, my friend stays very near Gharonda Apartments. You would capitalize the G of Gharonda and the A of Apartments. Having looked at these uses of the capital letter, let us proceed further. Capital letters are also used to indicate names of institutes and organizations. I am a student of Maulana Azad National Urdu University is something you will proudly tell others. Or I could say, my husband works at Research Center Imarat. Maulana Azad National Urdu University is the name of an institute. And look how M, A, N, U, U have all been capitalized. In the second sentence, Research Center Imarat is the name of an organization and therefore RCI have been, have been written in capital letters. If you are comfortable to this point, let me take you to another use of the capital letters. Capital letters, as I am sure you already know, are also used to indicate names of holy books. Look at these examples. Seema is reciting the Holy Quran. Govind has a rare copy of the Bhagavad Gita. John went to church with his Bible. In these sentences, Quran, Bhagavad Gita, Bible are names of holy books and therefore they need to be capitalized wherever they might occur in a sentence. Not just holy books, but also the titles of books need to be capitalized. Did you read Milton's Paradise Lost? Siraj has bought a copy of Wings of Fire. Paradise Lost is the title of a book and therefore P and L are capitalized. Wings of Fire is also the title of a book and therefore W of Wings and F for Fire are both capitalized. Now I'll point out something very interesting. Now suppose I were to say Siraj has Wings of Fire without capitalizing W or F or F of Fire. Won't you be confused? Won't you think Siraj has sprouted wings and these wings are on fire? Well, there is scope for confusion. Therefore, 
be very careful with the use of capital letters. After having looked at these uses of the capital letters, let us now proceed further and see how, apart from titles of books, capital letters are also used to indicate titles of articles in books. I could say, I presented a paper on women in literature. Or you could say, Arshad wrote an article on science in the common man. I would like you to pay little attention here. In the two examples that we have taken up, women in literature, science in the common man, we have used phrases. In phrases or sentences, remember, do not capitalize any preposition, conjunction or article that, may, that might occur in the middle. If it is the initial word, then yes, you will have to capitalize it. Therefore, if you notice, women in literature is written without the preposition in being capitalized. And in the second example, science in the common man is written without the conjunction and and the article the being capitalized. I hope the use of capital letters so far is clear to you. Let us now see how capital letters are also used to indicate names of different modes of transport. It could be the name of a train, a plane, a ship or any other mode of transport. Study these examples. Munawar travelled by the Rajthani Express. The passengers on board the Kanishka met with a tragic end. Rajthani Express, as you know, is the name of a train, while Kanishka is the name of a plane. So in each of these sentences, the modes of transport have been capitalized. Moving on from here, let us see how capital letters are used to indicate brand names of products. This particular use of the capital letter is very interesting and I would like you to pay some attention because if you do not use capital letters when needed, you would end up confusing your readers. Let us look at these two examples first. Rafiq has a Hero Honda. Mehreen has a Zen. Hero Honda is the name of a bike. Zen is the name of a car. So far, so good. These are brand names and they've been capitalized. But suppose I were to write down, look, there's a Scorpio without using a capital letter for S. Won't you scream out and say, oh God, is there a Scorpio here? While if I write the same sentence using the capital letter S, look, here's a Scorpio. You would immediately know that I'm referring to the vehicle Scorpio that could be found on any of our streets. Similarly, imagine writing to your boss, I need passion to come to office in the morning. Won't your officer be shocked? Well, you're not referring to your desire, you're referring to the bike passion. So, whenever there's a brand name, use a capital letter. If you are not confused with the uses of the capital letter so far, I'll quickly tell you about one other very easy to remember use of the capital letter. Capital letters are used to indicate points of direction. Gauss lives in the north. Jabin left for the west. The east is full of historical places. North, west, east are points of direction and they have been capitalized. Why did I say this is very easy to remember? Because like oceans, there are only four points of direction, east, west, north and south. You don't have to remember much. Having learnt how capital letters should be used, are there also places where capital letters should not be used? Yes, do not use capital letters to indicate food items. Do not use capital letters to indicate Qadr loves to eat biryani. Will you have some pizza? Musical instruments similarly are not capitalized. Zakir Hussain plays tabla. Amjad Khan is a famous sarot player. Vimala bought a sitar. At the same time, pieces of furniture are not capitalized. Moin bought a new dining table. Who spilled milk on the sofa? 
Before we take leave, I would like you to do this little exercise. I've been to the market to buy some eggs and bread. Mehreen and Arshad will leave for Canada today. My brother has a passion. Mr. Khan owns a Scorpio. So, until we meet next time, this is Dr. Gulfisha Habib, Reader in English, Directorate of Distance Education, Maulana Azad National Urdu University, signing off. Goodbye.